Hey, welcome to Q&A, where you ask your questions and I do my best to answer. Got a really good question. Uh, if salvation is a free gift and not by works, then why does Jesus say those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples? And it's a good question. And I understand where this question is coming from. If, if this is your question, perhaps you've read the scriptures and, and thought there, you know, we talk about faith or salvation being a free, a free gift. It's not by works, um, but by faith. And yet uh, we are to give up everything in order to have that. Is that an apparent contradiction? Well, let's look at what the scriptures have to say, because it might help us. Um, I don't think there is a contradiction. I think that we are confusing two aspects of faith. One is what it means to enter into a saving relationship with Jesus. The other is about what it means to live out of that. So you're, the question is right. Um, salvation is a free gift and not by works. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. It is entirely dependent on the finished work of the cross. Uh, by that, we mean that Jesus' work on the cross, his death and his resurrection uh, was total. It was final. There is nothing more to, that can be done, nothing more to do. Uh, it's complete. So when we come to Jesus and we accept what, his, what he did on the cross for our sake, when we recognize he died as me so I can live as he, uh, he paid the price for my sin, then we are saved. And, and that's free. It costs us nothing in terms of we don't have to do anything prior to that. We don't have to go through a, a period of doing good works to show our, that we are repentant, that we're sorry. We don't have to go through different rituals or rites or anything like that. The moment we recognize uh, I need Jesus and and I'm sorry that it's a finished work. It's complete. We are saved. But the, and so the, the question is right. But then it goes on. So why does Jesus say of those who do not give up everything? You cannot be my disciples. Well, let's look at what the scriptures have to say. Um, so, for example, in well, they all talk about this in, in various ways. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, for example. Let's bring up Matthew, seeing as the first gospel in the of the four four Gospels. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, uh, this is what we read. Then Jesus says to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, note that, and take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So, yeah, that's a... That's a that's our starting place is the scriptures. And there's a couple of things I want you to note. First of all, Jesus is talking to his disciples. They are his followers. Uh, and we might call our, put ourselves in that category. We are followers. If we've said yes to Jesus, we are followers. We're disciples. And now he's saying, if you want to be my follower, give, notice what he says. You must give up your own way. He's not saying in order to be saved, you have to give up your own way. He's saying, once you are saved, once you've re received salvation, if you want to live out of it, if you want to truly follow me, you can't live life on your terms. You must live them on mine. And if you think that's a bit unreasonable, that it's a bit harsh, let me just hit the pause button there for a moment. Think about this. If you're a Christian and you struggle with this idea that you have to stop um, living life your way and live it Jesus' way, um, my question to you is this, what brought you to the point of needing Jesus in the first place? You see, the reason we bow the knee before Jesus is because our way didn't bring us to where we wanted to be. Our way was only making things worse. We couldn't do it our way. Living life our way just compounded a sense of frustration, a sense of uh, hopelessness, a sense of emptiness, uh, whatever it was that you became aware of. When you became a Christian, you got to that point by living life your own way. So why would you want to continue? Why would you want to continue doing things your way after having recognized that 
your way couldn't bring what your heart, your soul was looking for. Only Jesus could. So he's saying, if you want to be my follower, you've got to stop doing what you used to. And the crucial thing there is, he says, take up your cross and follow me. And I've heard people define cross all sorts of ways. Um, I, I define it in terms of it's where the, your will and God's will intersect. It's where you have to make a choice. Am I going to follow in Jesus' footsteps or follow in my own? You've got to remember that back in Jesus' day, the cross was a um, was an emblem of of um, murder. It was an emblem of suffering and, and shame. And the cross is at the heart of the gospel. And yet it says, you know, to be a follower of Jesus, to take up your cross is, is going to bring you into places where you have a choice. Do I do it my way or do I do it Jesus' way? That's why I said if you, you've got to give up everything. He's not saying all your worldly possessions, all those things in order to be saved. He's saying if you want to follow me, it's going to cost you everything. It's going to cost you your reputation potentially. Uh, it's going to cost you your your image. It may cost you some friendships. It's going to, it's going to bring you into suffering and, and shame at times. When Jesus carried his cross through the streets, we read in Luke's account, for example, how he was vilified, he was mocked, he was jeered. To, for us today, being a Christian can sometimes mean that because we name the name of Jesus, it brings us into conflict with other people. And, and that's what Jesus says when he, he says, you know, um, if you want to follow me, you must stop living your way. You must stop living uh, to fit in with the crowds, to be accepted. Uh, you must stop trying to please people and you must walk in my footsteps. And that means it's going to bring you into conflict with others. It's going to, there's going to be a cost. I carried the cross of shame so that you could be free. Now you need to, to walk in that. So, so really when Jesus says, you know, you cannot be my disciples. He, he's saying that, you know, if you really want to follow me and live out of what I have for you, then you need to stop doing things your way and start doing my, things my way. And that's why he goes on and he says, you know, the father will judge all people according to their deeds. When you follow in the footsteps of Jesus, your deeds are going to be acts of righteousness, what the Bible calls acts of righteousness. They're going to be the things that that seek to honor Jesus. We're not going to get it right all the time. I don't, you won't. It's just, we're not there yet. But as we seek to, to give up living our way, to follow in Jesus' footsteps, our lives, our everything about them, our deeds, should increasingly reflect the heart, the character, the acts of Jesus. And, and Jesus says that the Father will judge us according to those things. In other words, we're saved, but there are rewards for living like Jesus. So that's why he says, you know, when Jesus says to, um, that if you don't give up everything, you can't follow my, can't be my disciple. He's not saying give up everything and then be saved. He's saying you're saved. Now give up everything in order to live out of that so that when your time comes to stand in glory, you might receive a great reward. So there's no contradiction. Uh, one is about being saved. The other is about living out of that. So I hope that clears it up. Good question. Uh, love to hear your thoughts about it. You can post a comment in the uh, below or send me an email, Hamish at alc.org.nz. As always, it's good to receive your questions. You can post some ALC, uh, sorry, at slido.com using the hashtag ALC22. Uh, look forward to seeing them. Until next time, God bless.